Was John Dorsey the reason why the Detroit Lions decided not to put in a waiver claim for L. Dell Beckham Jr.? We're going to talk about those latest rumors there. Tom Kennedy waived by the Detroit Lions. Amon Ross St. Brown potentially going to get more time on the field. Brock Wright, he is now going to be in the lineup quite a bit as we released Darren Fells. We're also going to talk about shaking up the offense, what can be done to get better. Let's begin. This is LeGarrette Blunt here, man, three-time Super Bowl champion. I just want to give you a shout-out to the YouTube channel, Micro Mike, man. Eddie Murray, former Detroit Lion. Make sure you watch Micro Mike on YouTube. Calvin Johnson Jr. here, uh, a.k.a. Megatron. Big shout-out to Micro Mike and the YouTube channel, man. Keep on talking to everything Detroit Lions, and I just got to remind you, man, happy wife, happy life. If you enjoy putting your hand into a fan while it's on high, then you want to go ahead and subscribe to my channel because we talk all things Detroit Lions news and rumors here. It's all about the pain that we have being a Lions fan. Also, if you could go ahead and Hadulkin the like button, knock it out of the way, that would be fan-freaking-tastic. Let's go ahead and start. No Dell Beckham Jr., the Detroit Lions are not going to be putting a claim on him. Was John Dorsey the reason why? Well, John Dorsey was with the Cleveland Browns when they went and pursued the trade for Odell Beckham Jr. And there is one person who knows him and very familiar. That'd be John Dorsey. And obviously, he's a high personnel in the Detroit Lions leadership. Was he the reason in telling them that this would not be a good play for the Detroit Lions from a player standpoint. Obviously, he wants to be on a winning team. He's been a diva. He would understand that, that being John Dorsey. That's the type of player he is, and that would not be something the Lions want in the locker room. And that's very possible. That's what's going around, or the roomy mill. I think it's very possible. But also, the $7 million cap, very possible, because the Detroit Lions do not have the cap space. As well as, he made it known that he does not want to be on a losing team. We've seen what he did with the Cleveland Browns, always whining and complaining. So, do you think he would do all that in Detroit? Yes, on steroids he'd be doing that because we are an 0-8 football team. We've not won a game, and that's exactly what the type of person he is. So I think John Dorsey, Cap, that as well. You put it together. That is the reason why they're not putting the claim in, and the Lions continue to try to get a win going forward. Comment on the video. Do you approve of the Detroit Lions not putting a waiver claim in for Odell Beckham Jr.? This one is simple. Why for yes and for no? That will be the pinned comment of this video. Get your voice heard. Let's see what you guys think. The Detroit Lions waived wide receiver Tom Kennedy. He's been trying to make this team for years, and he finally did it this year, but with basically no playing time on the field. He hasn't done anything. The Detroit Lions felt it was important to go ahead and waive him and make a change on offense. What do I think about this? No big deal. He wasn't doing anything anyways. And if you can't do anything with the wide receivers that we have currently on this roster right now, then you're never going to do anything because this is the worst wide receiver core in the NFL because we have injuries, we don't have the proper players, and if you ain't doing nothing now, you ain't never do anything, so I think it's perfectly fine. Gee, keep changing up the roster, see if there's anything that we can bring in as a diamond of a rough, just something at some point. We got to have some sort of cherry on this miserable season, and we want to see somebody in this core make a play and help out our quarterback. Dan Campbell said that Amon Ross St. Brown is going to have a bigger role in the Lions offense, and... I approve this message. I want to see more of him. We put a fourth-round draft pick for him. It is important that this young man get as much playing time as hum humanly possible. We need to evaluate every single young player on this football team. We need to know what the Lions need to go ahead and get in this offseason. What players are not going to be part of this team? What players are going to be part of this team? And with this 0-8 season... Having him get more playing time is exactly what needs to happen. Now, it's up to him to make big-time plays. He's got to get separation. He's got to get open. He's got to make the best of his opportunity because that's the whole point. That is the whole point of getting this guy in there who is recruited high, fourth-round pick. A lot of fans liked him. He was physical in training camp. Now we need to see it on the field when the lights are on because we need help, folks. Amon Ra has got to do it. Also, Jared Goff needs to look his way. You need to look his way, Jared Goff. When he's open, throw him the football. That's important. you 
got to give this man the football. We got to see what we have in him. And yes, that is exactly the right move to do. We got to see it though first. Decker and Panay Sewell are going to be on the offensive line together. How will this improve the Detroit Lions line? It's been shaky because of all the injuries. Now Taylor Decker returns at left tackle. We get to see what he does when he returns with Panay Sewell on right tackle, who has been on the left the whole time. Can Panay Sewell translate a good effort, a good technique to the right side, solidify it, and can Taylor Decker do the same thing coming back from injury? Will this offensive line hold and give Jared Gaff some time? Because it's been miserable all season. So it's important that these guys get in there and do a good job. We need consistency on this offensive line. We need Panay Sewell to do good on the right side because that's where he's going to be. And we need Taylor Decker to be good on the left side or else we're going to continue to see sacks. We're going to continue to see pressures. We're going to see him do the spin move, that being Jared Goff, and get sacked like he's been happening all year long. So these guys need to step up in a big way and do well for this Lions team that has been shaky at best upon this line. Make money is good, and we all want some extra money. So if you want to make some money, go to chessboards.com slash lionsbet. That is bet US. You put in the promo code lines125, and you get a 125% deposit bonus. Put in 100, spend 125. Bet on games. Just don't bet on the Lions winning games. You're probably going to lose out on that bet. You'll lose money. We don't do that here. Chessports.com slash Lions bet. Dan Campbell stated that there's going to be some offensive changes for the Detroit Lions. How is it going to really help, in all honesty? What can be done to really change anything? And I'm thinking, not much. I think you're picking at straws here because the personnel's not good. Now, I'd like to see a little bit of more... Godwin Iguabuque, I think that is something that you can do. Maybe a little bit of Jamar Jefferson, that's what you can do. Obviously, we talked about Amon Ross St. Brown getting some plays. That's what you can do. Maybe go ahead and run the football more, be a little bit better on that side. But I think the biggest issue here, and I think we all know it here, is you got to go deep route passing. We can't. All we do is throw five yards. you got to go deep route. You have to pound this in the head of the quarterback. The offensive line, get a little bit of time, and he's got to throw it downfield. If it doesn't happen, you have to make a legitimate change because you're not going to be able to do anything by just throwing five-yard passes. How is that going to open up for the run game? Not really. Not going to do anything. Doing the exact same thing over and over again, and expecting different results is going to result in more losses, more offensive terrible play. And right now, in the past six games, the Lions scored one touchdown in the first half. That can't continue. It cannot continue. So, Dan Campbell, if this is what you're going to do, do it. But my hope is not high at all because there's just a lot of personnel that's not good. We, we just have lack of talent. And there's not a whole lot you can do with the lack of talent except for get better talent. And we can't do that until the offseason. We can't do that until the NFL draft. That is where you got to put your focus on. So get these young players out there. See what we got. Do the best you can so far. And just get better talent when the season ends. Because we need it. We need help. And we're just going to have to wait to get it. And they got to strike gold in free agency. They got to strike gold in the draft, or I think fans are going to be up in arms. If we have another season next year like this, fans are going to be rioting in the streets. We all remember when they brought in the casket and hat Mad Millen, and they're marching around Four Field. That's what it'd be like if we start 0 and 8 next year. So changes got to be made. It's got to start. It's got to start immediately, and it's got to start immediately after the season is over by getting talent and having an effective plan to get talent. We don't need the same Brashard Perrymans and the Tyrell Williams. You need to get legitimate talent. You got to you gotta use some of that money. We got cap space and you got to do it. We need help. So get it done. Lions have a young tight end in Brock right now. He initially didn't make the team, practice squad, and he signed to the team, going back and forth consistently. Now we had Darren Fells and we released him. He was the veteran tight end for the Detroit Lions. Why do I think that signing Brock Wright to be on this roster and to make some plays a good move because we need to see and evaluate every young talent on this football team. And I know that we've drafted tight ends and tight ends quite a bit 
in the Lions, but we need to have a number two tight end and to evaluate Brock Wright to see if he is a player that can actually be on next year's team and the following years is really important right now. Because if he is not, maybe we go in the draft in the sixth round or in the fifth or sixth round, seventh round, something like that, to get a tight end to be a number two next to TJ Hawkinson. So that is important. And Brock Wright has made some plays so far this year. Want to see the young man grow. I want to see what he can do as being the number two guy right now. And evaluate him is important for the long-term success of the Lions. Right now, we kind of got to treat this NFL season like it's all a preseason game and slowly evaluate all the young talent on this team if they're going to be aboard this team for next year. And so I approve this message. I'm perfectly fine with them releasing Darren Fells and making Brock Wright giving him an opportunity to see if he can be that guy going forward for the Detroit Lions. In the upcoming videos, we got the One Pride podcast on my channel. It is on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, so get ready for that. It's going to be a fun time. Wednesday, tomorrow, I got a video dropping. We're going to do Mock Draft 2.0. What do I have for the Lions Mock Draft? I do a multiple scenarios and then kind of go with the aggregate there. And on Sunday, we got the Lions Watch Party, Detroit Lions, Pittsburgh Steelers on my channel. Get ready for that. It's going to be a fun show regardless of how this game plays out. And right after the game, we'll be doing a video as well.